In this video, I'm going to do page 30, 331, number 6, from the Nelson's Advanced Functions te textbook. The question asks you, for each of the following values of cos theta, determine the radian value of theta if theta is between pi and 2 pi. So the first thing you should recognize in the question is that all of those answers, A, B, C, D, E, F, they all have ratios like these. And these ratios, if you recall, come from your special triangles. So you should remember your special triangles. You should be able to sketch these out. I never encourage my students to memorize them, but rather to understand how to write them. This is a um, two sides equal triangle. That means that the angles here are the same. So they're 45 degrees if this is 90 and you get your 1, 1 square root 2. And that the cos of 40 is 1 over root 2. Rationalizing the denominator gives you that root 2 over 2, which you'll see in your question for letter C of number 6. Now, similarly, you have your other special triangle that has the 60 degrees. Remember, that's pi divided by 3, and 30 is pi over 6. So I always get these ones mixed up myself. Not always, but sometimes because I forget that I think the 3 is 30 degrees, but remember the pi is 180. 180 over 3 is 60 degrees. So I'm going to write that right here for you. And this was pi over 6. That was 30 degrees here. Okay, so what is the cos of pi over 3? The cos of pi over 3 adjacent over hypotenuse is a half. And the cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. And finally, in the book, they have zeros and ones. So if you are stuck and you can't remember how that works, get out your calculator because all you need to do is do second function cos. We're only dealing with cos in this question. They're all coses. So if I put the cos, what is the cos of zero? I get 90 degrees. So the cos of pi over two is equal to zero. The other one is a one. So 1 or minus 1, doesn't matter. I don't worry about the sign. So I'm going to do second cos of 1, and that gives me 0 degrees. So the cos of 0, and that's 0 radians or 0 degrees, cos of 0 is equal to 1. And that would also work for, um, because we don't have 0 in our, our range, our domain, sorry, we can also check to see what is the cos. Let's say, what if I put in the cos of 180 degrees, which is the same as pi, right? I get negative one. So cos of pi equals negative one. What's the cos of two pi going to be? Well, you can do the same thing here. You don't have to use radians if you're not comfortable with them. You can say cos of 360. Well, that's positive one. Okay, so now I have everything I need. I know all of the ratios for the cos of pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6. And these are the ratios that show up in the question because they're using those special triangles. Now, the next important thing to know is what is the domain that we asked for here. So in this question, they said the domain was 0 to, oh sorry, not zero, it was pi to 2 pi. So from pi to 2 pi. Now remember, if you were to draw a coordinate plane and think about your cast rule, which you also learned back in grade 11, that if we write cast on here, C, A, S, T, or all students take calculus, whatever you like, this from here to here is 180 degrees, so this is pi, and all the way around would be 2 pi. So that's 360, this is 180. So pi to 2 pi. Now, because our domain is between pi and 2 pi, that means that we're not going to look at anything up here. right? These, this is irrelevant to the question because it's not part of the domain. If they had said between 0 and 2 pi, that would mean you'd have two answers for every one of them. right? You, learned that quite well before. Okay, so when I'm in this quadrant, this is going to be, and I'm going to write it in orange or something here, this is where cos is 
negative, right? It's negative in this quadrant, and in this quadrant, cos is positive. So my questions, I'm either going to be in this quadrant, which is quadrant three, or I'm going to be in this quadrant, quadrant four. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions now that we've prepared ourselves, knowing where all the ratios are and which quadrant we need to be in. So question A says cos of theta is equal to minus a half. Well, they just gave you minus a half, but that's what they're saying. If cos is minus a half, what radian, what is the radian measure that we're looking for? So the first thing I recognize, and I'm going to draw a little, little coordinate plane here. So cos of minus a half, that means negative. So I have to be in this quadrant. Now, which value gives me one half? So I look over here, not this one. Here it is right here. So the cos of pi over three. Pi over three is 60 degrees. So that means in here, this is going to be 60 degrees, right? Or pi over three, whatever way you want to look at it. Sometimes it's easy to flip back into degrees to help your brain understand the radians. So this is pi over three radians. Now the angle has to be from here all the way around to this terminal arm here. So again, I'm going to write pi here and two pi here. Now, because I'm adding pi over three, it makes sense for me to write pi as three pi over three, which is just one pi, right? But three pi over three plus one more pi over three, that means theta has to be equal to four pi over three. Now that was easy, wasn't it? Okay, let's go to B. B says cos theta equals root three over two. Okay, root three over two, that's the cos pi over six. My domain says I have to be in those bottom two quadrants. So I'm just gonna be like here, it's here or here. T, C, cos is negative. In this question, they're looking for positive root three over two. That means I need to be in this quadrant. And root three over two is pi over six. Now remember that pi over six, which is 30 degrees, is a measure from the x-axis down. This is pi over six. Now I want to go all the way from here, all the way to here, right? Because it's we have to be in quadrant four. Now this time, instead of having pi and two pi, I'm going to change the denominator so that I can subtract this pi over six from two pi. So pi is six pi over six, that's one, and two pi is the same as 12 pi over six. Six goes into 12 two times. So if this is 12 pi over six and I'm coming back pi over six, I'm going to subtract that means theta is going to be 11 pi over 6. Okay, so we can keep going here. We'll do, well, we might as well do them all, I guess, right? C, it says cos theta equals minus root 2 over 2. Now, again, you would have had to know to rationalize the denominator to get this ratio here. That's the ratio for cos of pi over 4, or 45 degrees. So this time, cos is negative. So because cos is negative, remember we're not up here at all, we're 45 degrees here, or pi over four from this axis. So from here to here is pi. Pi is the same as four pi over four. So all I'm doing is changing the denominator here so that I can add this pi over four. So this is four pi over four plus five uh, pi over four. So that means theta is going to be five pi over four. So the important thing here is to make sure you're in the right quadrant by looking at the sign of the ratios that they give you. If they're positive, you're going to be in Q4. If they're negative, you're going to be in Q3. So let's do D. Now maybe you want to stop the video when I write this down and see if you can figure it out on your own and then come back and check. 
So root three over two, negative. So the cos is negative, I'm in this quadrant. Root three over two is the cos of pi over six. So I'm pi over six away from the x-axis. So this is just pi over six. And again, I'm going to change this distance from here to here. Instead of being pi, I'm gonna call it six pi over six, which is one pi. I'm going to go from here to here. So six pi over six plus pi over six. So theta is going to be seven pi over six. Okay, so those are all the ratio ones. It should be obvious to you from your special triangles, but let's look at the last two where they have E says cos of theta is equal to zero. Now, again, if you don't know, like sometimes you just don't know what it means cos theta is zero. This is your ratio. So plug that into your calculator, second cos zero degrees, and you will get one. So if cos of zero equals, oh, sorry, cos, the cos of theta is zero, then theta has to be pi over two or 90 degrees. So that one's just theta equals pi over two. Um, now, just a minute, we did something wrong here. Did you catch my mistake? We aren't in this quadrant, we're down here. So we have to go all the way down to this one to get our ratio, or our angle, so this is really 3 pi over 2, because pi over 2 was not in our domain, right? So double check your domain as well. And the last one, f, it says cos theta equals negative 1. So we did negative 1, and we found that the cos of pi is negative 1, but the cos of 2 pi is positive 1. So even though both these numbers are within the domain, because the domain was less than or equal to, pi would give us the negative 1, and 2 pi would give us positive 1. So again, there's only one solution, and that's theta is equal to pi. Okay, so thanks for that um, very good question, asking me to cover this for you. I know sometimes it can be really confusing, and I hope this really helped you out. If it did, please subscribe, like, comment, share. Um, we want to increase the channel's visibility as much as possible and tell all your friends to come and learn with me. Thanks for watching, and thanks again for the question.